going on is Tobias with Fresh Holistics. There still seems to be a lot of confusion around cholesterol and heart disease, so I want to shine some light on this topic and show you how cholesterol is not really to blame in this situation. I also want to go a little bit deeper than just HDL cholesterol is your good cholesterol and LDL is your bad cholesterol, because that's all we tend to hear these days. Uh, we first got to look at the fact that cholesterol is actually synthesized into lipoproteins. And lipoproteins is where it all starts. So we want to start there. So if you look up here, there's five lipoproteins that you commonly hear of. Chylomicrons, HDL, uh, VLDL, LDL, etc. Uh, we want to look at the com uh, composition or the anatomy of a lipoprotein first. So the structure of a lipoprotein is going to look like this. So to start with, we want to imagine this structure like a UPS package. So there's different components. The outer shell of that package is going to be composed of a phospholipid. Inside of the package is going to be like the cargo or the contents of that package. Within that package, what we have is triglycerides and cholesterol. So that's where we first see cholesterol. On the outside, there's also little tags called apoproteins. The apoproteins are acting like identification uh, or barcodes, and that's kind of essentially giving this uh, lipoprotein direction, and it's giving it a sense of where to go in the system. So it knows where to be delivered and where to go. Uh, so that's the basic structure of a lipoprotein. So let's look at the different types. Chylomicrons um, are actually synthesized in the small intestine from dietary fats. We're not going to focus on those ones too much because they're not found on uh, lipid profiles or your cholesterol scores. Uh, the next one is high density lipoproteins. These ones are actually responsible for extracting lipids from the circulation. Uh, and these are synthesized in the liver. So those ones are going to be beneficial for us. Very low density lipoproteins are also synthesized in the liver. Uh, these ones are actually going to get into the peripheral tissue and break down into IDL and LDL, intermediate density and low density lipoproteins. What we're really going to focus on is this low density lipoproteins because that's where a lot of the action is going to happen. So depending on dietary choices, lifestyle factors, uh, lipoprotein, uh, low density lipoprotein will have two fates. So if we shift over here, the two fates that we're going to have is either small dense lipoproteins or large fluffy uh, lipoproteins. And that's going to be dictated by the composition of the cargo. If the cargo is high in cholesterol, we're going to have large fluffy lipoproteins. If it's high in triglycerides, we're going to have small dense lipoproteins. Now the small dense lipoproteins are the problematic or the atherogenic ones that we're kind of worried about. Um, you can see by dietary choices, if we're having uh, more cholesterol, more saturated fat, the right lifestyle choices, we're going to have more lipoproteins that are large and fluffy, which is a good thing. Uh, triglycerides or small dense ones are going to be derived because of insulin. So these are going to be carbohydrate induced. So if we're not balancing the blood sugar, if we're not eating the right ratios of proteins, carbs, and fats, uh, if we're insulin resistant, you're going to see a lot of triglycerides in diabetics. If your alcohol com uh, consumption is too high, maybe if your stress levels are too high, we're going to see a lot of triglycerides and you're going to have a lot of small, dense lipoproteins. And that's not something that we want. Um, from there, let's take a little look at both of these lipoproteins in context within the circulation. So as we go up here, this is kind of like a play-by-play -play of what's happening in heart disease. Now there's three different stages. Each stage kind of represents a progression of what's happening in heart disease. And then eventually over here what we have is uh, a heart attack or a stroke. And that's you know definitely not desirable. Uh, but it's, let's take a little deeper look. So first of all, we have this huge band right here. That band in each picture represents the arterial wall, which we have here. Uh, above that we have the collagen lining. From there we have these little cells, which are the endothelial cells. Um, so what we're going to look at is the small dense ones, like I mentioned are atherogenic. Small dense ones are represented by the red dots. Red dots are going to act like little sand particles and they're going to stick to the arterial wall. So the small dense ones are going to stick and they're going to build up that plaque. And that's the beginning of what we call atherosclerosis. Now the large fluffy ones are generally extracted easily. They're represented up here uh, by HDL uh, that I mentioned before. 
Uh, they're also going to act, which I'll talk about in the future, is they're actually going to stop oxygen from reacting and prevent oxidation within the system, which is a good thing. So it kind of acts like an antioxidant. Uh, so let's go a little bit deeper. Basically, the first thing that happens is um, our immune system is going to start to ingest these plaque particles. And when they ingest the plaque particles, they actually end up dying. And then they secrete pro-inflammatory uh, pro chemicals that causes a lot of inflammation within this arterial wall. And that's a huge problem. Uh, they also send out chemicals that recruits other immune, uh, other white blood cells, and it kind of perpetuates the problem. So our immune system doesn't really work in our favor right here. Um, from there, the next step that happens is the, oxy the oxygen up here starts to react with these small, dense particles. So what's happening is these small, dense particles become oxidized lipids. So you get this free radical damage happening up here. Free radicals and oxidation is actually accelerated when we have more polyunsaturated fats within the diet. So our vegetable oils like our corn, soy, canola, those vegetable oils that we're consuming, that's a bad thing. Also in the presence of estrogen, stress, and hypothyroidism, we're gonna actually increase the likelihood of oxidized lipids. Hypothyroidism is actually going to slow the circulation, increasing the likelihood of this to occur. Um, let's go to the next stage. Basically what happens from there is we get more inflammation here. The free radical damage and oxidation continues to the point where it cascades. And when it cascades, it creates more of like an explosion. And the explosion actually dislodges uh, this endothelial cell. In the endothelial cell, what happens is it starts to expose the collagen layer right here. And that's a huge problem because when collagen is actually interacting with the blood, it starts to coagulate and it starts to clot. And that's, you know, a, as we'll see, a huge problem. Um, so the next stage here is actually a heart attack or a stroke. So what happens is there's so much inflammation, so much free radical damage and oxidation we have an even bigger explosion and more endothelial cells are coming up. We have more exposure to collagen and basically there's so much exposure to collagen that we end up getting a blood clot. So unlike what most people think is that um, the arterial walls are here and we just have plaque buildup until everything blocks and people think that that's what a heart attack or a stroke is. But actually what's happening is with the inflammation and the oxidation, um, a clot starts to form, so we have a blood clot clotting up this artery, not a fat clot. So it's very, very different. So we gotta, you know, understand that distinction and understand that it's not necessarily fatty deposits that's causing the huge problem, but maybe it's because we have too many small dents, which is from carbohydrates not balancing our blood sugar, or essentially just too much insulin, and then a lot of problems, which is increasing the likelihood of the oxidation within the system. Uh, so what we can uh, do about it. What we need to look at is some protective agents. So protective agents, first of all, would be cholesterol and androgens because those are going to act like structural antioxidants that are protecting us from this whole system. From there, what we also want to look, like, uh, look at is that antioxidants such as selenium, other fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin C, etc., those are also going to act to um, decrease the likelihood of this whole thing happening. We also, like I mentioned, uh, thyroid function, we also got to look at the metabolism. So looking at proper thyroid function. So if the thyroid is going too slow or there's something inhibiting it, uh, we, we definitely got to look at that. Um, and that'll be, um, you know, protecting us if we have proper thyroid function. So with all this information, some of my dietary, uh, nutritional and lifestyle tips that I would definitely recommend is first and foremost, making sure that you look into balancing your blood sugar. So we're, we're decreasing the triglycerides and decreasing the small dents um, and making sure that we're increasing the large fluffy ones. Uh, so by doing that, we need to balance the blood sugar by eating the right ratios of proteins, carbs, and fats. Everybody's individualized. So it's going to depend on the person. Uh, but some good fats to look into is looking at um, some good saturated animal fats from a good source, of course. Uh, maybe eating some good eggs, dairy butter, ghee, things of that nature, um, maybe some coconut oil, 
Uh, from there, we also want to consider eating foods that are high in antioxidants. Some antioxidant foods would be some organ meats, which most people are definitely ne negating, like liver, uh, having the right fruits and vegetables that are high in antioxidants, some fish, etc., etc. Uh, on top of that, we know that polyunsaturated fats is assisting with this whole oxidation process, which is not a good thing. So we want to be avoiding the polyunsaturated fats, especially the vegetable oils, like our corn, soy, canola, all those things. We want to get those out of the diet, making sure that we're not eating too many nuts, seeds, legumes, make sure that we're not eating the wrong types of vegetables. Uh, there's a lot of things that we got to consider as far as what's going to increase the polyunsaturated fat content. Um, another thing to consider is that we want to look at proper thyroid function and look at what's causing the high cholesterol, what's causing the differences in the lipid profile. So looking at like triglyceride levels, why are the triglycerides high in the system, what's causing that, um, looking at HDL because HDL is a huge beneficial indicator, and then looking at if the cholesterol is high, is it just that we're stressed out, um, are we hypothyroid, if the thyroid function is working properly, we'd be able to extract a lot um, and circulation would be moving a lot faster. Um, is it the fact that you know something's happening within the liver and if the liver is actually not being able to produce uh, or convert T4 to T3, the thyroid will slow down too. So there's a lot of things that we got to look into. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, I hope you, you guys learned something. And if you guys got any questions um, or you guys want to just check us out, look for us at freshholistics.com. Peace. Oh, 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 oh,